Good morning. And welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday in Easter. Happy Mother's Day to uh, many of you here. A very fun day. And it's fitting with the text I'm preaching on very nicely. And I hope it's uh, a message to take home for all of us. Um, mothers, as you head out of worship today, you'll hear about this in my children's sermon, but uh, there are going to be flowers for you, and the men of the church are putting on a, a coffee hour, and women, if you can get in line first, kids, it's mom's day, okay? <laughs> Let grandmas and great-grandmas and moms get in line first, and any men that can slip down during the final hymn and help in the kitchen a little bit, things are pretty well set up, but we haven't uh, gone to great lengths to get sign-ups or anything like that, so if you can help, that'd be great. But it's going to all come together today for sure. This week, um, tonight, uh, Brandon Valley's baccalaureate service, um, to mention that Trinity Law, one of our graduates, is going to be a speaker tonight. So uh, just a very special time in our community whenever, in all of the communities our kids come from, this is a special time of year. I look ahead to the week and just continue to have some firsts that are important and uh, are, are going to be worth lifting up here. The Outdoor Ministry Committee, about a dozen people signed up to be on that as we enter in now to phase three of our Beaver Valley Alive projects to get ready for our 150th celebration meets this Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, the 14th at 7 o'clock. No choir this Wednesday, but the choir sings a couple of pieces next week as uh, they end and wrap up this year of adult choir. So look forward to that. They'll be practicing at 9 o'clock next Sunday morning. And we do want to have then next Sunday as well a recognition of our graduates. So that's Trinity Law. It's uh, also Caitlin Berkman, uh, who's actually graduating from Madison High School, but is, of course, uh, very much connected to our congregation. And Shannon Backer, graduating from college. Uh, there'll be baskets out if you wish to have a card and bring that along to honor them. That is up to you. Caitlin Berkman's reception's here at Beaver Valley this Saturday from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock. 10 to 1, and Marvin wanted to make sure that that word got out uh, this morning. You're all very much invited. Hope you have your green sheet. Hope you have your green sheet. I'll be looking at that just very quickly during my sermon today. Just have that handy. And two more inserts for you to be mindful of. And it may be that this envelope is just on the back table or in the pew. It wasn't in every bulletin. But this simply giving or Vanco form is uh, worth lifting up one more time. Uh, it's a wonderful gift to the church if you're able to uh, line up so that your offering comes out systematically, automatically. Uh, it really does help us get through the blizzardy Sundays when we call off church and through sometimes incredibly busy summer times. If that works for you, you have a way to respond. Also, we're down to three weeks counting today to officially kind of come to the end of our three-year Beaver Valley Alive campaign. Uh, we're doing really well. People are hearing the call, and, and if you're like Nancy and me, you had the second half or a portion of your gift yet to give. We're now at 141000 after 136 a week ago. So a really generous response. And several of you talked to me this morning. You've yet to get your second gift in. We're going to be ready to go. So what encouragement to that meeting now on Tuesday evening the 14th as we begin to pray over what could happen with our uh, expanded kind of ministry footprint out east of this building. Any other announcements this morning? Any other announcements? Well, great to see such a crowd on Mother's Day. Let's stand and greet one another in the name of our risen Lord.
I direct your attention then to the bulletin in which you'll find our call to worship. One of the privileges of the season of Easter is we don't have to do a confession and forgiveness on non-sacrament Sundays. Just a little worship planning piece. Because Lent has been our confession. Now we're in the 50 days of Easter. And so we move into a call to worship, which will be the ending of my sermon. So if you wish to keep your bulletin handy, you can respond with me at the end of my sermon today. We worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We hear the voice of God calling. We feel the Spirit moving among us. We know the love of Jesus. We love because Christ first loved us. Come, worship God together. Remain standing for our opening hymn, Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing. pray together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O God of peace, you brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. By the blood of your eternal covenant, make us complete in everything good, that we may do your will and work among us all that is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our first reading today comes from the ninth chapter of Acts, verses 36 through 43. Dorcas was a faithful and devoted woman of charity in the community of Joppa. Her kindness and her work with clothing was well known, especially to the widows in town. When she fell ill and died, Peter raised her back to life through the power of prayer. Beginning with the 36th verse. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works of act and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. 
Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and when he knelt down and prayed, he turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and the widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. Our second reading today comes from 7th chapter of Revelations, verses 9 through 17. Christ is the shepherd who leads his faithful to the springs of the water of life. Christ is also the lamb who vanquishes sin and suffering, and whose blood the saints have washed their robes in and made them white. Beginning with the ninth verse. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here ends our readings. Please stand as we sing our Alleluia verse, verse 2 of Rise Up, O Saints of God. gospel comes to us from the gospel of John, the 10th chapter. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered round him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you're the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I've told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. Congregation may be seated at this time. Would the children please come forward for the children's sermon? Come on up, kids. Come on up. Come on up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got a few of you here today, anyway. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. I need your help badly. Well, I'm guessing this will be an easy first question. What is the name of this day? Mother's Day. Mother's Day, okay. Yeah. Let's just to get that straight first. Come on up, Casey. Need your help. It's Mother's Day. 
Well, why do we celebrate moms? Why are we happy on a day like this? Huh? What a kind of, yeah, Casey. They give you shelter. They give you shelter. Yeah, they give you a new pickup to ride around in, too. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen that. <laughs> What else do you, what are the great things your moms do for you? Think about it. I'll call you next to hang on. Yes. They give birth to you. They give birth to you. It kind of makes them, yeah, they're definitely your mom that way, right? <laughs> yeah, that's safe to say we all have moms. I love that. That's right, that's where it starts, isn't it, Betsy? What are other th- great things that we're happy about today when we think of our moms? What do they do for you? Yeah. They're nice to you, even when you're not always so nice. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. They love you so much. What else do they do? Yeah. They give you food. They make meals. What's your favorite meal? Tacos. Anybody else? Oh, what's the favorite meal your mom makes for you? Pizza rolls. Okay, what's your... Huh? (laughs) What other great things do your mom do for you? Huh? Yeah, go ahead, Casey. Help you find the right clothing, help you feel good about yourself when you get dressed. Yeah, all that. The list goes on and on and on. How do you repay your mom? Can you? How, how do you repay your mom on Mother's Day? What do you do? Huh? What do you do? Peyton, help me out. Give them $1,000. <laughs> Look under your pew. No. No, just... <laughs> what else do you do? Sarah, help me. What do you do to th- thank your mom on Mother's Day? Let them do what they want. Finally, a day of freedom, huh? Yeah. What do you do? You give your mom a gift. Okay. Casey, what do you do? A hug and say thank you. Yeah. Yeah, pets. Let your mother take a nap so you can watch your sister. See, little acts of kindness. Well, listen, here's what we're all doing here at the church today. Think, that make, think that's enough? No. Huh? Don't you think this is a year's worth? A buck fifty carnation? <laughs> huh? Not enough? No, it's not. Well, huh? Not for, but I mean, what we're doing is giving to every mother a flower. It's just a gesture. It's just one little thing. We can't possibly repay a mother's love, let alone God's love. God's the perfect parent, by the way. But we can't do it, but we just do the best we can. We say thank you. We give hugs. We allow a mom to have a nap. We, we give a little gift, whatever it is you're giving. I'd love to know. But we just have to make sure we say thank you to the people that matter most and help us along in life, Right? And that's moms, starting with moms today for sure. Let's pray. Dear God, we're going to give moms a flower today, but it's, it's just a symbol. It's just a simple little symbol of our gratitude, our ability to say thank you, and our need to say thank you, and not take people who love us for granted. Help us to learn from Dorcas. There's a name. Thank you for her life. We can learn from it all today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So kids, now, these flowers are going to be given out at the end of worship. You make sure your mom gets one, okay? We'll have some of our confirmation kids handing out flowers after worship, okay? All right. All right, you can be seated now. Thank you, kids. All right, your green little study sheet for what it's worth. And um, and then your call to worship. 
If you have that, that's fine. If not, don't worry about it when I get to it. Yes, daily acts of kindness, sacraments, daily acts of kindness. Let us pray. Dear God, on this Mother's Day in Easter, we celebrate the simple kindnesses of a woman named Dorcas. Help us live our lives well so that we will pass on, so that when we pass on, it will be the daily kindnesses that are remembered. In Jesus, our risen Lord's name, we pray. Amen. Well, it's been about, as I thought back, penciling out my introduction here, it's been about 40 years since I walked into the kitchen up at uh, my wife Nancy's folks' farm place, where they still live, up by Willow Lake. And my mother-in-law, Marlene, was heading up the work at that big uh, dining table, and the work was uh, something I had not seen before. And I would come to find out that what they were making were cream cheese mints, (laughs) where you roll the ball, and then you roll it in sugar, and then you pack it in, and that's your green sheet now. And then you pack it in, you pack it into a form, and then you have to knock it out onto wax paper and let it dry, they say on the recipe, 24 hours to dry. I didn't know that part. But then you put it away, and you're ready for whatever it is the big event is. Um, always there's some big event that prompts the making of these cream cheese mints. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Graduation receptions, you know what I mean? Cream cheese mints. All right. Well, you can't buy these mints. You can't buy these mints. Made by hand, and they don't taste good if they're not made with love. Each batch, most likely, a slightly different hue of green or blue or pink. I'm just dying here because I had a picture to go up here with mints on a plate There they are. All right. Uh, Amy and Randy, thank you. Whoever got that found, thank you. I didn't think we could find that. Look at those mints. Those are a little fancier than the ones I'm remembering, but you can't buy mints like that. You know, you got to make those kinds of things, and that's what makes them sacred. We're going to play with a word here a little bit. That's what makes them sacred because it involves sacrifice. There's no way to make this really a fast job. And so they really are sacraments. A little play on words, but I kind of had, I thought that was pretty fun. They're sacred because I can picture the people making them at the table. They're sacred because families gathering for a graduation or a wedding or whatever the anniversary is or maybe even a funeral. I don't know. I don't know. But sacraments. And that's a photo in the South Dakota Magazine, a, a wonderful little article, one column article by Laura Johnson Andrews. She writes, but the sweetest part of this tradition is the togetherness. Mint making is a group activity. If you're doing it alone, that can be a slog. But with a group, conversation and laughter make the task fast and fun. I hope you've made made a sacrament uh, or two in your life. And that's where the joy is. Well, let's get to the work now. Let's get to what this is all about. It comes, this story, from Acts chapter 9, verses 36 through 43, the first reading Dan read this morning. Here's the story. Wonderful, loving, caring for the people around her, Dorcas, has died. Everyone is grieving. She was loved for her kindness. The text says she was devoted to good works and acts of charity. There's that word charis, which is a Greek word for love. She was busy with good works because she loved. And she used her hands, apparently. She used her hands to make things, especially clothing for those around her. The text is clear about this as well. So St. Peter's been summoned. Of course, people are beginning to realize this early church, there's power in the church. And Peter has been busy curing the sick in Jesus' name. And he has raised several from the dead. And so they send for Peter. And Peter arrives at the home. Now they've cleaned up Dorcas' body and they've taken her upstairs. Pay attention to the detail now. And so the custom was for grievers to be there. And so the widows of Joppa, the widows of Joppa were upstairs with the body when Peter arrives. 
And Peter goes upstairs, and they immediately crowd around Peter because they're now standing with Peter. And they pull Peter in, even through their tears, even through their grieving. Listen to what they do. They show Peter the tunic that Dorcas had made. Look at what she made for me. And the quilt. And maybe even a dry old mint or two. Okay, probably not. Probably not. Probably not cream cheese mints. But certainly, the things that she did with her hands are a critical part of the hearing of this text. The grievers showed Peter, look what this woman did for others. Look what she did. So who is this woman, Dorcas? You're really given two names. Tabitha is Aramaic. Dorcas is Greek. Anybody here, you get extra bonus points if you get this right. Anybody know what the name Dorcas means? Gazelle. <laughs> it's, I had to look it up twice. Gazelle. The fastest land animal on earth. Dorcas is quick. These names always have a meaning in scripture. Dorcas is quick to come to the aid of the people around her. On this day, great-grandmothers, grandmothers, mothers, we celebrate you, especially for the times when you say, let me show you how to serve. Let me show you how much you mean to me. Now, I have to be sensitive here. I realize that not every person here has a mom that one would want to emulate. Not every woman here is a mom by choice or by circumstance. Siri Beckman uh, Sorensen reminded us at Tech Study this past Tuesday that she knows of more than one woman who always stays home on this Sunday. Not wanting to have to deal with the, quote, perfect mom, unquote, myth that we seem to create. But I trust that none of that will keep us from our powerful teacher, Dorcas, whose instant response to need around her, whose willingness to work into the night to finish a tunic for the family member or friend in need is, is to be emulated, is to be copied, learned from, so that women and men, women and men, can leave the sanctuary more committed to be quick ourselves, to the needs of those around us. Okay, so maybe you can't sew like Dorcas or don't have the time or the interest in making sacra mints for next week's high school graduation reception. The recipe's easy. You have it on your green sheet. Why not make a batch and surprise a graduate? Knock at the door. A little extra, a little something extra for your table. Why not? Maybe you can't do much at all with your hands that you would claim would ever be even close to something sacred. But let's be real clear. This story of Dorcas isn't really what she did with her hands. It's what she did with her heart. Our call to worship is right. I said, we hear the voice of God calling. You said, Love your neighbor as yourself. I said, we feel the Spirit moving us. You said, moving us to acts of compassion and service. I said, we know the love of Jesus. You said, we love because Christ first loved us. I said, come, worship God together. You said, Come, let us serve our God with daily acts of kindness. Mothers, thank you for your selfless sacrifices. A little carnation leaving church today is not even really a beginning to our thanks. It's the best we can do. All of us, let's be Dorcas. Let's be quick. Let's not hesitate. Be quick to acts of love. For our text today is clear. 
those deeds of love will be all that are spoken of when we are gone. Think of it. Peter went up in the room and the widows of Joppa were grieving and said, look what she made for me. Look what she did with her days. A wonderful Easter lesson for all of us. Amen. And so we sang. I would ask that you stand as we join together in profession of faith. The words of the Apostles' Creed are before us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated at this time, receive your Sunday morning offerings, and the children offering is received on the front steps of the altar.
congregation, please stand. Love has come again like we down rising breeze. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear God, the widows of Joppa remembered the kindnesses of the woman Dorcas. May we be used by you to humbly serve others. May we be spoken well of in the end. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, we remember today those who grieve the loss of loved ones. We pray today for the family and friends of Rita Lenling, Grandma to Liberty Lenling, and Gerald Parker, um, Gary Parker's father, who passed away. We pray for all those who mourn and make funeral preparations. May we be reminded by nature itself that winter and death will not win. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, we pray for the sick and recovering. We pray for those who are battling chronic illness, those preparing for surgeries. Today we pray for Beulah Parkinson. Continue to pray for Jeffrey Hammer as he battles his cancer. We pray mightily for Janet Anderson as she prepares to go in for life-changing surgery. We trust We continue to pray for young Jordan Ramazani and Deanna Christensen, Sheila Walters, Don Ward, Nick Johansson, and and Jaden Johansson, and all those we lift up before you now in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. And dear God, we pray over all these busy weeks for so many people, many families getting ready for these milestone events like graduations. We look ahead a couple of weeks and we'll be remembering those who've gone before us, the faithfully departed on Memorial Day. Help us to prepare well and be intentional about that. Thank you, dear God, that all of life, all of the chapters in life are committed to you. Lord, in your mercy. And dear God, we pray for our communities that we come from here today. We pray for Gerritsen and Brandon. Pray for Valley Springs. We pray for Sioux Falls. We pray for Larchwood, Rowena. We pray for Beaver Creek. We pray for Laverne. And all the other places that we come from. We pray for their leaders in our own communities as we participate as citizens. We pray for the leadership in our state We pray, dear God, that South Dakota would be a place where all races would have voice, where all people would find encouragement. We pray, dear God, for our nation, that leaders that we have elected would do good work, guide them away from fighting and into the needed work of solving problems. Dear God, we lift up all of our communities and governments and ask for your blessing upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you all peace. We have worshiped in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, my confirmation kids who've agreed to help hand out flowers, you can go to the back of the uh, sanctuary and be ready back there. And women, again, moms, you have first, uh, first dibs at that coffee line this morning. Okay, we'll try to make this simple but fun. We sing, Savior like a shepherd lead us. Please note the verses one, two, and four. Go in peace, serve the Lord.